I was a regular CWDX operator a few decades back out of sheer necessity. The 3 into 807 vacuum tube radio I had homebrewed then was CWAM and had no provision for SSB. With only a dipole antenna, I could not dream of working DX without CW. When I took my grade 1 license and later advanced grade license, Morse code was mandatory for those grades. So I was having fair CW sending and receiving speeds. Fast forward to 2024, lack of use over decades has brought down my CW sending and receiving skills to bare minimum. Moreover, I have never used CW Kia paddles. Now I have a Kia paddle but no straight key which I was familiar with. My FT710 has a built-in CW Kia. All I have to do is plug in the paddles to the 3.5mm key socket at the back of the radio and set up the radio for using CW Kia paddles. From the mode switch at the top of the radio, CWL or CWU mode can be selected as needed. I was told that convention followed is just as LSB and USB. For 7 MHz, CWL has to be selected and for 14 MHz and above, CWU has to be selected. FT710 manual mentions CW injection is in upper side band though the radio has both CWL and CWU. Probably they meant higher bands which are usually used for CW DX operations. Kia has to be switched on using the function knob and choosing Kia on in the display. Monitor level can be selected and adjusted as needed for one's convenience of hearing. I chose higher level because of high background noise in this region. CW pitch is 700 Hz as default and I did not want to change it as it seemed comfortable for me. CW Kia speed can be adjusted from the display and I thought of relearning at 10 words per minute though I had much higher speeds earlier with straight key. I am yet to practice with the Kia paddles. As you may be aware, pressing one paddle sends out a series of dips while pressing the other sends out a series of DAS. Tried keeping the CW speed at 5 words per minute. Then the length of DAS seemed uncomfortably long. There is a selection on the display for break-in. If that is kept off, one can practice CW in the radio without sending out the signals. If that is switched on, the signals will go out which can be confirmed by seeing the lighting up of the busy TX red light above the tuning knob. If the meter dial has been set to display power, it will also show the needle deflection indicating power output for each DIT and DA. Of course, a very sure way of practicing without sending out RF signals is by removing the antenna from the SO239 socket. Keying by mistake with break-in on and antenna disconnected will cause high SWR to light up. But modern software defined radios will automatically shut down the RF output to prevent damage to RF final stages in case of antenna disconnection. I have just learned preliminary details of how to set up my radio for CW operations. There are more parameters in CW settings which I have not meddled with at present. Now, the more difficult task is to practice sending with paddles and receiving for which I am looking forward to support from ardent CW operators out there who are ready to send and receive at slow speed to start with. Though currently there are options to send using keyboard and decode with programs like FLDG, short for fast light digital, I wish to relearn my lost CW skills.